Because I think that the MCAT is, in a lot of ways, a really beautiful exercise in problem solving. Alex, back for some more MCAT podcast. How are you doing, my friend? Hello, hello. I am doing great. Thank you. New podcast, new year. New podcast, new year. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's rock and roll. Uh, new Blueprint MCAT test that we're going to start to do a deep dive in. Students seem to love these deep dives into, we've done full length 10 from Blueprint. Uh, we recently got done reviewing full length one from Blueprint, which everyone gets for free by signing up for a free account over at blueprintmcat.com. Uh, and they also get for free a half length diagnostic that we're gonna start to jump into. But before we jump into that, the biggest question I always get is like, do I even need to do this half length diagnostic? What is the point of this? Isn't it just there to scare me and sell a, a blueprint MCAT course or a Kaplan course or a Princeton review course or whatever, whatever had diagnostic you're taking that day? W what is your thought when students say, Alex, do I need to do a diagnostic? You know, oh, that's, a, that's such a great question, right? Because I think just Almost at first glance, it's a, it's a little bit of a strange thing to offer, right? Just like, hang on, this test is half the length of the real thing. Like, to what extent is it even applicable? Mm -hmm. And it's so funny. And this is why I feel like I spend often, you know, when I teach the live course, I'll spend the first probably two or three lessons, like, really pushing people to take the diagnostic. And I think right off the bat, right, you know, it's not a tool to sell courses because I encourage people to take it once they're in the course. And I think it's so, so valuable, right? The MCAT as an exam itself I, is a little bit over seven and a half hours long. And I think for many people, kind of not only have they never taken a test, you know, this long, they've never even taken a test like kind of anywhere close to this long. And what I think is so valuable about the diagnostic is that it's, you know, it's half length, right? It's long enough to kind of cover the scope of the MCAT and to kind of, I think, pretty solidly peg, you know, approximately your level of preparation mm. while actually being a really good introduction into kind of testing on this kind of time frame, right? Not quite at the length of the real one, mm -hmm. but kind of long enough that you get an idea for what taking the test is like yeah. and to provide a really solid starting point. So a student takes the half-length diagnostic, they take our advice, they go and take it, and then they see what in their mind is this atrocious score because they're thinking, okay, I saw the newest double AMC data, the average MCAT score for students who matriculate is a 511.9 or whatever it is now. Um, oh, is that, is that, did that just come out the other day? It, is it, it higher this year? It is higher. It went up. Uh, but I did a whole podcast. I want everybody to go listen to it. I did a whole episode on what the data actually means. And everyone's freaking out going, oh my gosh, the MCAT scores keep going up and up and up and up for matriculated students. And what they're ignoring is the average MCAT score is also going up and up and up and up. And actually it's outpacing the average score for matriculants. So the average no longer is 500, right? Is, is what we consider the normal bell curve. If you look at that bell curve, it's shifting. And now it's like a 501 point something uh, is the average MCAT, which just tells me students are getting better at taking the MCAT because of the MCAT podcast, obviously. Um, and so students are getting better at the MCAT. And yes, scores are going up because of it. And logically, it would make sense that there are more people with higher scores applying to medical school. It's not that medical schools are looking for only the higher scores. So I did a whole breakdown of that. Like correlation doesn't equal causation. Stop freaking out. But yes, the, the scores are getting higher. And so a student takes a diagnostic and they will then look at that score, whether it's a 496 or a 488, and it's, it's pure panic. What do they need to think about when looking at that diagnostic score? You know, it, it's it's so funny that you say that because I was in, of course, of course, exactly <laughs> the same position. In fact, I would even say I was in a relatively extreme position because I 
lacked a lot of the basic science content when I first started studying for the MCAT. And mm. there's an entire separate episode about that. And I think it's this is so interesting, right? Because I think for many you know, often the kind of, I think the types of people who want to be doctors, I think it's, I think it's fair to say, you know, very highly motivated. The kinds of people who listen to the MCAT podcast, you know, perhaps even more highly motivated. And the types, they are the types of people who, when they take tests in college, do really well. I think it's really scary to get a diagnostic score back that says, you know, you are in the 15th percentile. And I really stress whenever students kind of feel bad about this it's like hang on you haven't even started yet yeah right it's like i don't know arriving at the dmv to take your <laughs> driving test like before you've ever sat in a driver's seat before and before you've feeling... never seen a car yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and then you know and then getting you know sad and feeling terrible when you happen to crash it's like yeah. well if you've never driven a car before you're yeah. not gonna nail it the first time yeah yeah right <clears throat> I think it's really, I prefer to think of full lengths not as kind of tests in the traditional manner, right? Because, of course, I mean, they are tests, right? They are copies of the real test, you know, and they align with the real thing quite closely. But I prefer to think of them instead as snapshots, mm. right? What are they? They are taking a picture at a particular point in time of your kind of global MCAT readiness, yep. right? And if you're going to improve your performance for this test, right, you don't just need one snapshot, you need a series of snapshot to snapshots to trim, eh, to string together into a trend. Mm. Okay. So very similar. We, we, I use the kind of marathon running analogy all the time, metaphor, when it comes to taking the MCAT. Nobody's going to go out and run a, a four-hour marathon without any training, without ever stepping foot into a running shoe. Um, and so if you were to go just get off the couch and go try to run a marathon, you're going to be less than 15th percentile of all the runners out there running the race. Um, and you'll probably end up in the emergency room on top of that. Um, and, and so it's the same thing. You are, are out there taking this evaluation, this, it's, it's like a pseudo self-reflection, right? It's, it's an external company testing you, so therefore it's not really self-reflection. Um, but it's after you're done doing it, you are then able to reflect on your performance and go, okay, I remember some of this stuff from my classes. I don't remember a lot of it. Let's go. And, and that's really, at the end of the day, um, the, the goal of the diagnostic is just to wet your beak, get the, get the, the joints loosened up, uh, and get you ready to start running. Yeah. And, and with that in mind, actually, I, I often also advise people that, you know, I think often people will take the diagnostic and maybe be disappointed. Yeah. And then often they'll go on, you know, they'll study maybe for two, three, four weeks, and then they'll go and take the first full length, full length one, which of course, you know, if you'd like to review that full documentation now available in the MCAT podcast feed. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And they'll see that their score either stays the same or, you know, declines by a point or two. Mm. And, I, and, I, I like, and I always say to people as well, like, you know, that's actually kind of to be expected because it's entirely possible that you're, in fact, I would say probably even certain that your underlying MCAT readiness has improved. Mm -hmm. But of course, you've doubled the length of the test. Yeah. Right? And kind of mental fatigue is real. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. So when should somebody think about taking that diagnostic? As soon as you start studying for the MCAT, like literally right at the beginning. You know, okay. you need a, you know, in the same way that if you want to train for a marathon in six months, well, then you should know what your marathon time is right now. Mm -hmm. So right. somebody who is a, a second year student who's probably a year out from taking the MCAT, uh, who is still very far out from starting to study from the MCAT for the MCAT, you don't recommend like somebody random who's a couple years away 
just go take a diagnostic just just because? This is an interesting and like specific situation yeah. where in general, no, I don't recommend people do that because I think the, sc the scope of MCAT prep, you know, although it does look different for everyone, there are elements that are common to everyone. Mm -hmm. I think certainly, you know, if you are a freshman in college and you're interested in to like to, to see, you could take the diagnostic, right? But it means that you don't have that resource available to you when you are actually, you know, when you are mm. like seriously studying a prep period, you know, of course you could take it again, but you know, <laughs> as we know, retaking full lengths, you know, or, or half lengths, even often many months or years after you've taken them the first time it, they're not as representative. Yeah. And I don't think it provides you with a kind of serious concrete advantage or any really any actionable information okay right if you're a sophomore right who's going to study for the mcat in a year it's like well what use is a snapshot of your performance now in yeah. the sense you know, you'll probably take some more pre you know, you'll probably take some more prereq classes in the meantime mm -hmm. which will adjust your underlying readiness don't you want the diagnostic to capture that yeah that makes sense Okay. Any other final words of wisdom for the students and their diagnostic before we jump into Blueprint MCAT's diagnostic in our next episode? Uh, enjoy the diagnostic. I know that sounds. I know that sounds crazy, right? I know often for many people, you know, <laughs> taking enjoy full torture. <laughs> yeah, I know for many people it is a harrowing experience, but I do. I think for many people, the diagnostic is their first exposure to how the MCAT tests content. And I think for many people, right, one of the reasons they want to pursue medicine is a love of not only science, but of kind of problem solving. Mm -hmm. You know, that is to say like, oh, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'd l I want to meet with a patient and I want to kind of hear about their, I want to hear about their background and about their symptoms, but ultimately as a doctor, you know, I would love to be able to synthesize those sources of information together into a diagnosis. What I love about the MCAT, and one of the reasons I became an MCAT instructor in the first place, is I think that the MCAT is, in a lot of ways, a really beautiful exercise in problem solving. And I think if you are the kind of person for whom that is also true, I think just taking a step back and you know, having a look at the structure of this first of your first exposure to MCAT content as a exercise in this activity, mm -hmm. I think really helps maybe reframe this journey.